that even when you come close to him through the intervention and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you will still realize that this is a holy God that I am serving. There's a holy God that I am in love with and I have that relationship and access to. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. After a very long break, I um, might I say so myself, um, we're back. The Honey and Milk podcast is back. Yay! Yeah! Praise God. I hope you guys have been fine so far. And this is just to say welcome to any new viewer. Welcome to this space. If you're trying to ask yourself, what is this Honey and Milk podcast all about? This is a place where through the Bible, through the word of God, we find strength and encouragement to continue and to journey on in this world as a Christian through the help of the Holy Spirit, who is my beautiful co-host, as always with me, and also through the word the Bible, as I've said, in order for the glory of God to be seen. So that is what this podcast is about. And I hope you feel welcome. I hope you look around. There are some other videos, some other episodes before this, and there will most likely be more after this as well. So that is just to say welcome. That is just to say hi. And let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm Brainy Stauda. I am a biomedical engineer by occupation, and yeah, I'm just here chilling with you guys, as well as the Holy Ghost, also finding strength and encouragement for myself as a Christian. So let us now dive into today's topic. Today we'll be talking about the fear of God. So the fear of God is something that can be a little bit um, complex to understand, because it also has adverse or rather negative emotions connected to the word fear. So I'm going to start out by giving a story of how I got to understand or how I perceive the fear of God to be, or rather what helped me to understand the fear of God a lot more. And I'll start off by saying, um, just imagine you were friends with Samson, right? He's known to be very, very strong. He defeats a, a few hundred men with the jawbone of a donkey um he killed a lion and he carried off city gates so this is somebody that is very very strong very very strong to say the least and just imagine he's your friend just imagine he's someone that you call friend he's someone that you guys chill with you guys talk you guys laugh you know you've known him since like when he was a baby maybe you guys went to the same school together you guys visited the same synagogue and all of that you guys played and all that and this is someone that is your friend very good friend and As you guys are friends, as you guys develop, you start to hear of all his achievements, all his victories, and you are like, you're starting to realize how strong this guy is. So as you're his friend, do you now allow that familiarity of friendship, of relationship to now make you want to overstep and anger him? So that would be like, for instance, now when you guys are, let's say you guys get into an argument and when you're in that space of anger trying to go above whatever do you think in that moment even though you guys are having a relational uh, communication or disagreement do you think you would still put it in your mind that oh i could beat this guy or even in that moment you still have a realization of how strong this person is and how much more I guess, like how the person can fold you into two (laughs) easily, even though you guys are really, really good friends. And that is how I, I understand what the fear of God is. The fear of God is that even on the basis of our relationship, our love relationship that, um, with, we have with God, it is not a pass to then still undermine and underestimate God. The fear of God is 
there are lots of scriptures that talk about and describe what the fear of God is and um, also the benefits it has um, with it as well. One of the popular scriptures is that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I really do understand, especially in that situation, how it it can lead to you doing wise things. Because let's go back to the story now. Just imagine you and Samson as being friends. You're now in that space of anger. The wise thing would be to just part ways, go calm down about it, and then come back and talk about it. That would be you doing a wise thing in the in the realization and estimation of who Samson is and how strong he is. That would be the wise thing to do. The foolish thing to do in that situation is then to now pick a fight, knowing that this guy can deck you easily. So that is what I, I, I think the fear of God does, especially when it comes to wise and um, doing wise things and being wise generally. And um, there are a few scriptures, like I said, that describe what the fear of God is. And I'm going to give you guys in case you want to go read more about it. It's Proverbs 15 verse 33, Proverbs 9 verse 10, Proverbs 8 verse 13, and Proverbs 1 verse 7. This, these are just a few scriptures that I noted down. Um, but there are lots more speaking about the fear of God. So what I wrote here is that godly fear keeps you aware of the eternity that God is, that he's eternally mighty, large, existing, loving, beautiful, and great. And just as how there are, the devil likes to twist things because also in the word he says, do not be afraid, you know. So why is it that God is, in the Bible, God is saying that, um, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but yet he also says, do not be afraid. Is he trying to counter himself? And for that, I will point out that there is a difference between um, godly fear and um, worldly fear. So in Hebrews, I believe where it talked about Noah building the ark, he says that in godly fear, he built the ark and it was counted to him as righteousness. So, or rather, it was counted to him as faith. Sorry, Abraham's was righteousness. And it was now through him that God brought about the, the new human, <laughs> the new humankind that we have now because the flood took out everyone, right? And in that moment, would you say that that fear was a worldly fear? I would say no. Um, how I would describe the two is worldly, world, worldly fear tends to cripple you it tends to it tends to have adverse like it tends to make you do foolish things let's say that (laughs) so if the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom then that means the fear of anything that is not god is then the beginning of foolishness and um I, we also spoke about in one of the previous episodes where I spoke about fear and how fear would either make you freeze, fight, flee, or there was another there was another word there. I, 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 I've forgotten what it was. But those were the consequences and what the worldly fear, the ungodly fear will have you do. But just as how there is wor- worldly sorrow and there's godly sorrow, the godly sorrow that will lead you towards repentance and the worldly sorrow that will lead you towards death. So also is there a worldly fear that keeps you away from an eternal God and causes you to worry and have anxiety, which is contrary to what God wants for you. Well, the godly fear is the one that would make you realize that I have drifted away from an eternal holy God and will cause you to um, understand that he he is way he is he's eternity he is eternal he's he was at the beginning of eternity and he will be after so in that mindset even when you come close to him through the intervention and the sacrifice of jesus christ you will still realize that this is a holy god that i am serving there's a holy god that i am in love with and i have that relationship and access to it will make you realize that it 
even when you're in his presence, it doesn't take away the fact that he is still way more eternal and he is just bigger in every situation. And it also leads you to have what I would call consequences. Like the, there, there are consequences to everything that we do. You know, every action has a reaction. <laughs> but um, the reaction or the consequences of fearing God will then lead to stuff like trust. Um, I'm not going to go into that. That was That's going to be for the next video. But before I round up this video, I want to also um, speak on how to cultivate that habit or a heart that fears God. So most of us want to be wise. We want to gain wisdom. Some of us go to school to have knowledge, to gain knowledge and understanding. Um so I'm guessing wisdom is also a well-coveted virtue or thing. And in order to have, and what can you do to cultivate a heart that fears God? Um, I would say for me personally, one way that helps me is that I take the biggest thing I can think of. Um, let's say I take a mountain and I can compare how a mountain is before me, like a real life mountain I'm talking about. You can use anything you see in nature. You can you can use anything, basically. And um, you can use skyscrapers. So I take a mountain, for instance, and I start to... When I, when I can see the, the big difference between me and a mountain... Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now isolate the mountain, the thing that I think is so big. And then I begin to trace its origin. How did the mountain come about? They say mountains came about the, um, this, there's two tectonic plates coming together. That's one type of a mountain. There are also volcanoes that are mountains. That's a volcanic mountain. Um, so you can just take the origin of that thing that you think is so grand and you just lead it you you follow the the traces and how it came about almost at the end of everything you would most likely come to a point where god will be attributed for the origin of that thing so once you begin to see that everything you think that is so great and is so big came out of god then you would begin to understand that god is mightier than any mountain that you can see and you can have in your life um you can also take um an emotional mountain that you're going through let's say um maybe you're worried or you're anxious that you have bills you have debts coming up i want you to now isolate that debt and then once you realize that okay debt comes from acquiring uh, rather spending money that you have not acquired then you can go ahead and be like okay where does money come from when did money come about um what does the bible say about money the origin of money and you sort of trace it down and then you realize that this earth was founded before money and most likely if money is a byproduct of the human mind then god is definitely much more wiser and much more greater than the human mind so that debt is not something for you to kill yourself over and you can fully trust it to god so those are that's a way that could help you to always put god in the perspective of who he is as god and over time, you will get that habit of giving God the awe and the reverence and the honor and the greatness that he is well deserving of. And um, yeah, before we go, I just want to pray for you. And I really, really, I want to take this moment to just pray over you that whatever it is that you have, you have before you as a mountain as an issue that you think you cannot cross over i really pray that your heart and your faith will be built up to know that god is greater than that thing um i pray that if you are seeking for the heart that fears god i pray that he will help you to understand and get to that point where you fear god and you walk according to that faith and I just pray generally for your heart and I pray for your mind that wisdom will be your portion in everything you do. 
And I pray that whatever you put the wisdom of God upon, um, just as the word of God says, that it would the benefits and the profits and the 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 principle that it follows will be your portion in the name of Jesus. So thank you so much for getting to this point of the video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Um, please leave a comment below about your own experience, about the fear of God, what you thought it was, and um, just generally what you think about the fear of God. And as always, I love you with the love of Christ. Take care of yourself. Bye.